Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yeshi Chonsong. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Thursday, the 3rd of September. Amid border tensions with China, Indian Army chief reaches northern Ladakh to review situation. Locals blame authorities destroying historic places in Pakistan-administered Kashmir. An Indian oil crude carrier catches fire off Sri Lanka, one injured. And now for all the details. Amid border standoff with China, Indian Army Chief General Naravne on Thursday reached Leh as part of a two-day visit to review the operational preparedness in the Ladakh region. His visit comes at a time when Indian troops have thwarted the Chinese Army's attempts to transgress into areas in Ladakh. Indian Army Chief General Manoj Naravne on Thursday reached northern Leh region as part of a two-day visit to carry out a comprehensive review of the security situation in the region. Naravne's visit comes at a time when Indian troops have thwarted the Chinese Army's attempts to transgress into areas in Ladakh. The Indian Army has further bolstered its presence in at least three strategic heights in the southern bank of Pangong Lake in eastern Ladakh days after foiling China's provocative actions to change the status quo in the area, reports suggest. India wants to resolve the border issue through talks, but will effectively deal with any misadventure by China along LAC. I think that has been put very clearly. The vigilance all around, alertness all around on the India-China border is there currently. Meanwhile, India and China continue to hold talks at brigadier level for the fifth day as well after the Indian Army thwarted Chinese Army's attempts to transgress in new areas. Both the countries are engaged in a standoff since April to May over the transgressions by the Chinese Army in multiple areas of the region. India registered 83,883 new coronavirus cases on Thursday and 1,043 more deaths. The spike has taken the total tally to over 3.8 million confirmed cases keeping in line with its test, track, treat strategy to prevent the coronavirus from spreading, India has conducted more than 117,000 COVID-19 tests in the last 24 hours. A record surge of 83,883 fresh coronavirus cases in the last 24 hours took India's COVID tally past 3.8 million mark on Thursday. The spike has taken the total tally to 3.8 million 53,406 confirmed cases, including 815,538 active cases, according to India's Health Ministry. Maharashtra remains the state hit hardest by the pandemic. In the last 24 hours, 1.17 million samples were tested, the highest single-day test so far, taking the total number of tests past 4.5 million. In capital New Delhi, that witnessed the number of active COVID-19 cases increase by around 50 percent in a month, Delhi Health Minister said the government is focusing on more testing. Look, we are increasing tests. I have told you that yesterday we had more than 30,000 or 35,000 tests. And we are giving more tests on Meanwhile, following a pause of over five months due to the COVID-19 pandemic, Delhi Metro services are set to resume in graded manner from September 7. Delhi Metro Rail Corporation or DMRC has started preparations to begin the rail service in the city with all safety protocols issued by central government in regards to COVID-19 pandemic. Moving on, locals in Pakistan-administered Kashmir have blamed authorities are deliberately destroying places of historic and cultural significance in the illegally occupied region. They accuse acute negligence compounded with systematic designs to not let the region develop has also deprived it of any major touristic footfall. A report. 
Locals have blamed authorities in Pakistan administered Kashmir have been deliberately destroying places of historic and cultural significance in the illegally occupied region. Recently, a centuries-old bridge on a famous waterfall near Chinari area was razed down completely instead of efforts to preserve it. Locals have blamed the bridge built in old architectural style could have become a source of historical references and revenue generation, but they have now been deprived of it on Islamabad's instructions. <laughs> Clad with hills and valleys, the scintillating scenery of Pakistan-administered Kashmir has the potential to become one of the prominent tourist hotspots. But locals blame acute negligence compounded with systematic designs to not let the region develop has not only deprived the illegally occupied region of any major touristic footfall, but have pushed it into a state of dilapidation. Ahead of peace talks set to start this week, Afghan President Ashraf Ghani and Abdullah Abdullah, Chairman of the High Council for National Reconciliation, met the peace negotiating members on Wednesday morning. Ghani assured the members that as a national team, they have strong support of the government and people of Afghanistan. Afghanistan's President Ashraf Ghani and Abdullah Abdullah, the chairman of the High Council for National Reconciliation, on Wednesday met with Afghan peace negotiation team. According to the Presidential Palace statement, President Ghani assured the members that as a national team they have the strong support of the government and people of Afghanistan and that Afghans see strength in the team's diversity, unity and coordination. Ghani said that the government has fulfilled all its commitments to the peace process that the international community had hoped for and the release of Taliban prisoners is a clear demonstration of the government's commitment to peace. Abdullah said that the release of Taliban prisoners was not an easy decision. This comes as 200 hardcore Taliban prisoners out of 320 were reportedly released by the Afghan government on Wednesday and the process is almost complete. The peace talks are expected to begin in Qatar this week. Meanwhile, Afghanistan will transfer to Qatar seven prisoners whose release has been demanded by the Taliban ahead of peace talks, officials of both warring sides as well as Western diplomats said on Thursday. The United States has imposed sanctions against two senior officials of the International Criminal Court for prosecuting U.S. military and intelligence personnel in Afghanistan. The UN has expressed concerns over the sanctions, saying it trusts any restriction taken against individuals would be implemented consistently. The United States on Wednesday imposed sanctions on International Criminal Court or ICC prosecutor Fatou Ben Souda, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, informed over her investigation into whether American forces committed war crimes in Afghanistan. Pompeo further said, Fakiso Mocho Choko, the head of ICC's jurisdiction, Complementarity and Cooperation Division, had also been blacklisted under sanctions authorized by US President Donald Trump in June that allow for asset freezes and travel bans. ICC prosecutor Fatou Ben Souda was given the go ahead by the court in March to investigate whether war crimes were committed in Afghanistan by the Taliban, Afghan military, or U.S. forces. The United States will designate ICC prosecutor Fatou Ben Souda and the ICC's head of jurisdiction, complementary and cooperation division, Fakiso Mochichuko, for having material assisted prosecutor Ben Souda. Individuals and entities that continue to materially support those individuals risk exposure to sanctions as well. Meanwhile, the United Nations has expressed concerns over U.S. sanctions, saying it trusts any restriction taken against individuals will be implemented consistently with the decades-old U.S. deal with the U.N. to host the world body's headquarters in New York. U.S. forces and other foreign troops entered Afghanistan in 2001 and overthrew the Taliban government. Since then, it has become the United States' longest war. In news from Nepal, 
Local administration of Kathmandu Valley has extended the ongoing lockdown for another one week as COVID-19 cases continue to rise in the region. Virtual meeting between chief district officers of Kathmandu, Bhaktapur and Lalitpur on Wednesday evening decided to extend the lockdown for third time till 9th of September. The valley has been under prohibitory order since 20th of August, barring public mobility and vehicular movements, except for the essential services. Enlisted as major virus hotspot, Kathmandu Valley currently hosts a total of 6,112 active cases. Nepal's coronavirus infection cases have doubled in one month. As of Thursday, more than 41,640 confirmed cases of COVID-19 were reported across the Himalayan nation with 251 associated deaths so far. In news from Sri Lanka, a fire that broke out on a fully loaded super tanker of the east coast of Sri Lanka has been brought under control, a spokesman for the Sri Lankan Navy said on Thursday adding that one of its 23 crew was injured till the last reports came in. The new diamond crude carrier chartered by the Indian Oil Corporation was headed to the Indian port of Paradip, carrying about 2 million barrels of oil when the incident happened. It was about 20 nautical miles off the east coast of Sri Lanka and its military had sent an aircraft and two ships to aid in the rescue. Sri Lanka's Marine Protection Authority said it would take measures to prevent any possible oil leak from the tanker. Favorable weather conditions and introduction of new varieties have helped farmers to boost the production of almonds this year in India's northern Jammu and Kashmir territory. The trees are loaded with enriched quality production and the farmers and dealers both are anticipating huge profits. Almond growers and dealers in India's northern Jammu and Kashmir are rejoicing over enriched quality production this year and are anticipating high profits. According to the farmers, the almond production has been less this year amid the pandemic. However, the quality has been good due to favorable weather conditions and introduction of new varieties and assisted by experts from agriculture research institutes in the Union Territory. The almonds of Kashmir Valley are widely known for their superior quality and taste and are in great demand across various parts of India. Quantity is less, but quality is very good. तो दूसरी बात यह है कि मौसम भी अच्छा रहा इस बार चलो इसको इतनी बारिश भी नहीं चाहिए थी इनका अपना इरिगेशन भी था इस मतलब इस वक्त मतलब फसल इस वक्त बहुत अच्छी थी कूल एंड ड्राई क्लाइमेट ऑफ कश्मीर इज आल्सो सूटेबल फॉर फ्रूट्स लाइक स्ट्रॉबेरीज एप्पल्स चेरीज प्लम्स ग्रेप्स एंड वॉलनट्स व्हिच रिक्वायर मॉडरेट रेनफॉल एंड ब्राइट सनशाइन वेल दैट्स द वे इट वाज इन साउथ एशिया दिस इवनिंग बिफोर वी कंक्लूड द टॉप स्टोरीज वंस अगेन Amid border tensions with China, Indian Army chief reaches northern Ladakh to review situation. Locals blame authorities destroying historic places in Pakistan administered Kashmir. An Indian oil crude carrier catches fire off Sri Lanka one in two. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash AsiaNewsline and follow us on Twitter at AsiaNewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.